Our scripture reading tonight comes from the book of 1 Kings, chapter 18. Listen for the word of the Lord. Ahab sent the message to all the Israelites. He gathered the prophets at Mount Carmel. Elijah approached all the people and said, How long will you hobble back and forth between two opinions? If the Lord is God, follow God. If Baal is God, follow Baal. The people gave no answer. Then Elijah said to the people, come here. All the people closed in, and he repaired the Lord's altar that had been damaged. Elijah took 12 stones, according to the number of the tribes of the sons of Jacob, to whom the Lord's word came, your name will be Israel. He built the stones into an altar in the Lord's name, and he dug a trench around the altar, big enough to hold two sails of dry grain. He put the wood in order, butchered the bull, and placed the bull on the wood. Fill four jars with water and pour it on the sacrifice and on the wood, he commanded. Do it a second time, he said. So they did it a second time. Do it a third time. And so they did it a third time. The water flowed around the altar and even filled that trench with water. At the time of the evening offering, the prophet Elijah drew near and prayed, Lord, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Israel, let it be known today that you are God in Israel and that I am your servant. I have done all these things at your instructions. Answer me, Lord. Answer me so that this people will know that you, Lord, are the real God and that you can change their hearts. Then the Lord's fire fell. It consumed the sacrifice, the wood, the stones, and the dust. It even licked up the water in the trench. All the people saw this and fell on their faces. The Lord is the real God. The Lord is the real God, they exclaimed. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. For the past 15 years, I've been a follower off and on of professional wrestling. I know, I know, it's fake, it's scripted, it's violent, but my interest in professional wrestling really began in high school, and it's continued, fortunately or unfortunately, depending on how you look at it, it's continued into adulthood. So if you ever want to talk about WCW or the NWO, we should chat sometime. But in reading this scripture about the showdown between Baal and Yahweh, it sure read to me like the main event at WrestleMania. So in this corner, we have the God of the natural. In Canaanite culture, Baal was known to be the controller of the weather. When it rained, it was Baal's doing. When it was a drought, it was his doing, and so on and so on. Baal could change nature at a, a moment's notice. So in this corner, we have our first competitor, and we'll call him Baal the Precipitator. He can make a snowy day bright in a moment's notice. He's got control over everything that happens in the air and in the sky. So I imagine if I had to name his finishing move, I imagine it would be called something like the accumulator or the barometric pressurizer. <laughs> so that's this corner. And in the other corner, we've got Yahweh or God. 
Now, this is the God that we love and worship each week. While this scripture that I read is from the Old Testament, this is the God who eventually gives us Christ and the Holy Spirit. And this God is known to be the Savior of God's chosen people. So when you read stories about the earth being flooded, the Red Sea being parted, the people being brought out of Egypt, that's all Yahweh is doing. So we're going to call this competitor all the way Yahweh. This God is the almighty creator and has control over all, all of creation. This is the one who named the Trinity and who sacrificed himself on a cross for all of humankind. And Yahweh is also the God who moves in this world in spirit form. And every good wrestling match needs a great referee. So enter Elijah in his black and white striped shirt. Now he's a prophet who's been dealing with King Ahab and Jezebel. Now the thing you have to know about Ahab and Jezebel is that they are serious worshipers of Baal. And the reason why that is, is because they, being the king and the queen, control the prophets of Baal. And so they're certainly happy to worship a god that they have control over. But here comes Elijah, proclaiming Yahweh as the one true god who is more powerful than Baal, and who renders Baal's finishing moves powerless. So Elijah is obviously on the side of all the way Yahweh, and like any good referee, he wants to make sure the right person wins the match. But Elijah also recognizes that not all people watching this go on are on the side of Yahweh. In fact, the people are really holding up two signs in the audience. One that says, wash him away, Baal. And the other says, take him all the way to the one, two, three, Yahweh. But the problem is, is that the same people are holding these signs, one in each hand. And what the people are doing is worshiping both gods as a way of let's say, hedging their bets. So if Yahweh wins, they win. If Baal wins, they still win. But the problem with that approach is that you're not truly loyal to one God or the other. And you know both gods, Yahweh and Baal, ask for complete and total devotion. And if you're worshiping both at the same time, or trying even to combine the two and boil them down into one religion. It, it just doesn't work that way. So Elijah creates this contest, the main event, for the two gods to battle it out and see who's really on top. Now, as I said, Elijah is on Team Yahweh. People we don't know that, we know that, everyone knows that. So Elijah creates this main event match surrounding this altar of stones that he built for Yahweh. So Elijah takes great care to set the scene in the middle of the squared circle or the wrestling ring. He builds this altar out of stones he digs a grain trench around the altar. He slaughters a bull. He puts that on the altar. And he piles wood on top of this. The contest becomes about lighting this altar on fire. Now, I've said that Baal is the god of all things natural. Water, air, weather. 
fire. So if Yahweh can bring fire to this altar, it really proves that Yahweh is the champion, that Yahweh is the real God. But before the fire becomes involved, Elijah adds a little more spice to the competition and instructs the people to fill four jars with water and to pour it on the altar. So if you've ever been camping and tried to start a fire with wet wood, you know how difficult this is. On top of that, to add insult to injury, Baal is supposed to be the god who controls water. So it's really a double insult to our first competitor in this main event. So 12 jars of water in total are poured on this altar, enough even to fill this trench that was dug around it. And just before this match starts, Elijah kneels down to pray. He asks Yahweh for three things. He asks Yahweh to prove that Yahweh has chosen Israel to be God's people. He asks Yahweh to prove that Yahweh has chosen Elijah as a prophet. And he asks Yahweh in some way to prove that Yahweh is the one true God. So after Elijah is finished praying, the altar ignites and everything, wood, bull, stones, grain, even the water, is consumed in the fire. Yahweh is the winner of the main event. Yahweh takes home the title, and all the people throw themselves on the ground, recognizing that Yahweh is the one true and only God. So sometimes in life, Yahweh has to burn something to the ground in order to build something up. And it seems silly for the God who created everything to have to set this little altar on fire to prove that Yahweh is, well, the God who created everything. But God recognizes that sometimes we just don't get it. Sometimes things need to be destroyed so that new things can be built. If all goes to plan, according to plan with our architect, in a few short months, half of this building is going to be destroyed. With Yahweh's guidance, we're knocking it down so something new can be built. And some of our members have a really strong attachment to this building. In fact, our theme of this morning's worship service was saying goodbye to Waverly. So we grieve that loss with people who are feeling this building is a loss. We remember the people who, since 1849 is when this church was founded. We remember the people who came before us, who put their blood, sweat, and tears in this building. We remember everyone who has been laid to rest here. And we lift up those who have proclaimed the Spirit in baptism here. And we'll experience that again last week as we receive and baptize and remember in the service. We even take a minute to thank all the previous pastors that God called to this place who have led First Presbyterian Church of Waverly have led them in worship and help them grow in faith. 
So we take those learnings from the past, from Athens, from Sayre, from Waverly, and we carry it with us into the future. So no matter what building you called home, if you called one of our legacy churches home at one point, it's okay to grieve the loss of a building. It's okay to be sad when you see demolition equipment roll into the parking lot here. But I pray that when we start to see tarps put up and walls start to be raised and the equipment outside and the contractors hard at work, I pray that it creates a sense of excitement. We know that some people don't agree with what we're doing. We know some of our members voted against what we're doing. But we know that God chose this place for us. Not because it's better or because it's more holy than another location. It's not because we couldn't have a wonderful ministry in Sayer or Athens or even in a new location. But for reasons probably only God understands fully, God chose this site for us. It's now up to us to make it ours. So it's okay to grieve. But be excited about tomorrow. But not, not because we're going to have this beautiful new building at some point. But be excited about the future. Because the God who can create fire from water, the God who answered Elijah's prayers, and the God who won the main event in this hardcore Falls Count Anywhere match with Baal, is the God who will be with us even in this service when we close the doors for Pops at the end of the summer and we move to Athens. It's the same God who will walk with us into the future. So praise be to all the way Yahweh. Amen.